Choose the right exfoliant and you can wake up to soft, beautiful, glowing, luminous skin with minimized pores and more even skin tone. Choose the wrong exfoliant and you can end up with a second degree burn, impaired skin membrane barrier, and worsening hyperpigmentation. That is why it is super important to choose the right chemical exfoliant for you. So in this video, I'm going to guide you as to how to choose the right chemical exfoliant. For anyone new, hello, my name is Alexis. I'm a board certified dermatologist. And for my subscribers, hi guys, welcome back. We've reached 100K, you guys are amazing. So if you are new, please subscribe and hit the like button. Without further ado guys, let's get into this video. So the main reasons to exfoliate are to promote a smoother feel to the skin by basically breaking up those glue bonds that hold each cell together. When you do this, it helps the skin to basically slough off and exfoliate. This also promotes a more even skin tone because you are increasing the cell turnover. In addition, it helps to unclog pores because again, we're getting rid of dead skin cells. All of this results in a more luminous, glowy, and radiant skin tone. However, you don't necessarily always need to exfoliate. And I think that's really important. Our skin already exfoliates on its own. So make sure that you have one of the four reasons that we're about to go through that you actually need to exfoliate the skin because my friend even if you do nothing else your skin is already exfoliating on its own it's a natural process that the skin does before we jump into who should exfoliate, let's talk about who should not exfoliate. So if you have dry flaky patches on the skin, this does not mean that you need to exfoliate. It means that you need to hydrate and moisturize the skin. So dry flaky patches means there is an impaired skin membrane barrier somewhere and we actually need to hydrate and moisturize. Okay friends? So if you are sensitive, stinging, tingling, burning, not the time to exfoliate. If you are just starting a retinoid, not the time to exfoliate because you don't want to further irritate the skin, impair the skin membrane barrier, and get yourself in trouble. Okay, so for those who have a nice intact skin membrane barrier and you have one of these four conditions, you should exfoliate one to two times a week. Don't overdo it, my friends. If you have acne, if you have mature skin that feels tired or stressed, if you are dealing with hyperpigmentation, or if you have dry, rough, bumpy patches on the skin. This could be anywhere on the skin. We are not just talking about exfoliating the face, we are also talking about exfoliation of the body. So if any of these four categories pertain to you, you should consider exfoliating. The most popular chemical exfoliants that everyone talks about are the AHAs or the alpha hydroxy acids. This is your glycolic acid, your lactic acid, your mandelic acid, malic tartaric, there's so many. Now these act mostly as humectants, meaning that they pull in water. They are water magnets but they also exfoliate the skin. And depending on how big the particle is, it may actually be able to dig deep into the skin and help to generate some collagen. This is mostly gonna happen from that glycolic molecule because it's so small, it can actually dig deep into the skin and help to stimulate collagen. The others are just a little bit too big to get down there. This can be a good and a bad thing. Glycolic acid can be amazing for those who are dealing with aged skin, right? Stressed skin, wrinkles and fine lines, even it can help hyperpigmentation. You just want to be very careful and if you have skin of color, you want to make sure that you start very low and go slow. To be honest, everybody should be starting low and going slow when building up their acids because everybody's acid tolerance is different. What I can handle may not be what my sister can handle. So it's really important for us to start very low and go slow so that we can prevent any type of sensitivity or worsening of conditions to develop. So glycolic acid can improve skin strength, skin hydration, and really promote a smoother, more luminous complexion. It's going to be geared more towards someone with resistant normal skin. Now, I don't like the term normal. I like the term balanced, meaning that you're not quite oily and you're not quite dry, but 
you guys know that as normal. So if you've got resistant skin, meaning that there are a lot of things that you can put on that you don't put things on and usually sting or burn, I would recommend glycolic acid for you. There's quite a few different ones, so really depending on what's going on with your skin is going to be the way that I would recommend that product for you. This one is the Glycolic Acid Resurfacing Gel Serum by Notorium. This is 10%. And then this is the Even Skin Tone Enzyme Mask. It's got 5% glycolic, 5% lactic, and also vitamin C. So for mature skin that's really looking for more of a luminous glow to also help you feel hydrated, these are two really great choices. If you want to start lower, this one is 5%. And if you're looking for a little bit more punch, this one is 10%. Now, what about those who have maturing skin, but they cannot tolerate glycolic acid? My recommendation would be to go with a PHA, which we will talk about in a little bit. That stands for polyhydroxy acids. But let's finish in the AHA category. And certain areas of our body really tend to be able to handle a stronger percentage of glycolic acid than others because the skin is thicker there. So again, start low and go slow and you can always do a little patch test to make sure that that area of the skin is going to be suitable for you. For those with more sensitive skin that's trying to fight hyperpigmentation, I would recommend going with a lactic acid. This is also amazing if you have dry skin because a lactic acid has lots of humectant properties, meaning it brings in the water. So this is a really great choice because it's a larger molecule than the glycolic, which means that it penetrates more slowly and has less chance of causing hot spots. A molecule that penetrates even slower would be mandelic acid because it's larger than a lactic. Now mandelic acid will be great for hyperpigmentation. It's also amazing at dry skin because it is a water magnet. But on top of that, it's really good for those who are fighting acne as well because it is actually lipophilic, meaning that it can really get in there and unclog the pores. So if you have congestion, hyperpigmentation, acne or dry skin, mandelic acid is a really great choice. So for the lactic acid product recommendations, if you have mature skin that is not able to tolerate glycolic acid or you just want to err on the side of caution, I would highly recommend this Derma E. This is ferulic acid resurfacing pads. This one has resveratrol, DMAE, and lactic acid. So it's Firming. It has resveratrol, which is an amazing antioxidant, and it's got lactic acid, so all of the properties that we just talked about. Now, if you're not necessarily looking for anti-aging benefits as much as you're really just trying to target the dark spots, I would recommend this one here by Melly. This is 5% lactic acid, but it also has vitamin C. So really great if you're just trying to really hit those dark spots as much as you can. For those wanting to tip your toe into the chemical exfoliant pool, this is an amazing one to start with. This is mandelic acid, 5%. This is a K-Beauty product, but it is super gentle on the skin and a great way to get started with mandelic acid if you have really sensitive skin, but you want the benefits that we just talked about. Now, when you're ready to step it up a notch, you can go with the mandelic acid by Notorium. This one is 12% and I love this for anyone that's really trying to fight hyperpigmentation because it's got niacinamide too. You guys know how I feel about niacinamide. One of the questions I get asked a lot is from patients who have dry skin who want to exfoliate and are acne prone. Mandelic acid is amazing for that because mandelic acid actually has antimicrobial properties. And remember, it actually is lipophilic, so it can get into the pores and help to declog all of that congestion. So it's a really great choice if you are wanting to exfoliate, but you've got dry, acne prone skin. Now, if you have oily, acne prone skin, BHA is going to be your friend. So this is gonna move us into the next category of exfoliants. Now BHAs or beta hydroxy acids really are just talking about salicylic acid, right? Cause it's the only one. This is going to be ideal for those with oily, acne prone skin that have enlarged pores and blackheads. Now, just because you have oily skin doesn't mean you have resistant skin. So if you have sensitive skin, I would actually opt for a BHA that you can easily wash off. This is a great one by Inculus, but there's so many others. 
Now for those with resistant skin, you can actually go with more of a BHA leave-on product. This is the 2% BHA exfoliant and it is a leave-on, so I would recommend this one for more resistant skin and the wash-off product for more sensitive skin. Now the reason that so many of us recommend BHAs for oily prone skin is because they are lipophilic or oil loving. They're going to get in that pore and really help to get rid of the dead skin cells and the built up oil by unclogging all of the congestion. So really great for anyone with oily prone skin. Now for those with a super sensitive skin, so I'm talking about my rosacea and eczema prone people there is an acid for you. There is polyhydroxy acid or PHA. Now, don't get this confused. Even though it is gentle, it is very good. It still packs a very powerful punch because it helps with exfoliation, but it also is a water magnet. Draws in lots and lots and lots of water through its humectant properties. It also can help to decrease glycation, which is that sugar breakdown that gets rid of collagen, gets rid of elastin. We don't want that. So we want a product that helps to fight glycation. And in addition to this, it has antioxidant properties. So it has a lot of benefits that the other acids don't have. Even though it is more gentle, it is still a gentle giant. So my product recommendations for PHA, if you are ultra sensitive, everything you put on your skin hurts or stings or burns or calls redness, I would start with a PHA that is a wash off product. This one here by Neutrogena would be a really great choice. Now this has one of the most popular pH acids, which is the gluconolactone, but there are multiple other pH acids that you can find. This does tend to be the one that pops up in most products. And the one here by Notorium um, has multiple different humectant properties. It also helps to protect against blue light. And you guys know, Blue light is the enemy for a lot of reasons, but it has been linked to hyperpigmentation, especially in those with a darker skin tone. And there has been some evidence that it causes aging in the skin. So give me all the blue light protection. I will use the PHA. It's great for gentle skin. It's a humectant. It's blocking sugar breakdown and it promotes smoother, softer skin in a very gentle manner. All right, friends, so let me give you a walkthrough on how to start using chemical exfoliants. First, start with the patch test. Put a small little bit behind your ear or wherever it is that you're going to be using it on the body and wait a whole day between when you applied it, wash it off at the appropriate time, and then look at the area, see how it feels. If there's no problems, then go ahead and move on to using it. Now, still, I want you to start low and go slow. If there is a range of percentages, I'd rather you start with the lower percentage to make sure that you're not going to have any irritation to it. Don't use your exfoliants on the nights that you're using any other actives. Start low, go slow. So if you're using a retinoid, don't use any exfoliants that night. All right, so now you're finally ready to start. Go ahead and cleanse your skin. You always want to start with a nice clean canvas. Now, prior to applying your product, I want you to protect the delicate areas of the skin where no chemical exfoliant needs to be. Corner of your eyes, corner of your nose, corner of your mouth. So we've cleansed our skin, we've put our protective barrier on, now it's time to use our exfoliant. Your skin should be a little bit damp because remember, these products do work better on damp skin because they have lots of humectant properties. Go ahead and apply it. Now leave it for a little bit less time than the bottle says if it's your first go round because we wanna make sure you don't get irritation. So whatever your allotted time choice is, leave it on, rinse it off. I would actually recommend a double cleanse to go ahead and rinse it twice. That way we know there is no product left on the skin giving you any hot spots that can lead to irritation and inflammation and impaired skin membrane barrier and none of the stuff that we want. Now once it's cleansed off, go ahead and apply your moisturizer. Please choose a moisturizer a little bit richer than you would normally choose because remember, we just took that top layer of dead skin off. We need to make sure that everything is going to be hydrated, locked, sealed, and moisturized. Now, if you have really dry skin, you may even want to choose to cap it with an oil on the night of exfoliation. All right, so let's just do a recap starting with importance. Number one, 
always wear your sunscreen the morning following an exfoliation because they make you more sun sensitive, always. I also recommend that you use these exfoliants one to two times a week. Now I know a lot of times the bottles will say one to two times a day. That does not have your skin membrane barrier in mind, my friends. Once to twice weekly is more than enough for exfoliation, with the exception being BHA or PHA wash off products. All right, now for number three, this is gonna be a heavy recap, so get your pens and papers or get ready to screenshot. Dull, tired, stressed skin that is mature and aging but resistant, go with a glycolic. Now, if you are sensitive, go with a PHA. Now, if hyperpigmentation is your main concern and you have mature, resistant skin, you may choose to go with a lactic acid. If hyperpigmentation is your main concern, but you have sensitive skin, you can choose a mandelic or a PHA. Now, if dry, rough, bumpy, scaly skin is your concern along the lines of keratosis pilaris, you're going to want to go with a glycolic acid. If you have really sensitive skin, you're going to go with a very low percentage glycolic acid. And if you've got more resistant skin, you can go with a higher percentage. If you're acne prone and oily but have sensitive skin, you're going to go with a BHA that's a wash off. If you're acne prone and oily but you have resistant skin, you can go with a BHA that's a leave on. And if you're acne prone and dry, go with a mandelic acid. I get so many questions on chemical exfoliants, guys, so I hope that this was a helpful guide for you. If so, please give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below on any questions or whatever you want to see next. Until next time, guys, be well.